Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I'm gonna share how to make these cute three-dimensional shadow box cards using Heffy Doodle's Big Shadow Box Die. Today's video is the latest episode in my Support Small Card Making Businesses series, and I'll link to the whole playlist up here. As I mentioned, I'll be showcasing Heffy Doodle today. I absolutely love their adorable little critters, their versatile stencils, and this amazing big shadow box die. As you may know from some of my other videos, I am not big on measuring at all. So I love this shadow box die because it does all the work for you, cuts out all the pieces that you need and scores them as well. If you're wondering whether or not you can send this three-dimensional card in the mail, stick around till the end and I'll let you know. But without further ado, let's get started making a shadow box card. This is the Heffy Dual Big Shadow Box Die. This is the large die that creates the box and you need to cut out two of these pieces. The scalloped rectangle can be used to decorate the back of the shadow box or it can be combined with the double stitched rectangle to create a frame around the window. The stitched rectangle is used to cut that window out of the front of the box. This arc piece is what you use to create different distances inside your shadow box. You can see they have score lines on the side and you can use these tabs with adhesive to place them within the box. You can place multiple pieces of these inside your shadow box. I usually use at least two and no more than three. The first adhesive I'm using to adhere all the tabs today is the iCraft Easy Tear Tape in the 1 8 inch. I'm also using the Simon Says Stamps Teflon Bone Folder, which is perfect for reinforcing folds and score lines. Any bone folder will do, but I've used others, and this is by far my favorite because it really glides across the paper. I use the bone folder to reinforce all of the score lines, and I fold the paper back away from me at each of the score lines. I hope that makes sense. So instead of folding towards me at each score line, I always fold back underneath. On one of the panels, I temporarily adhere the double stitched rectangle and run it through my die cut machine to create the shadow box window. Then I'm going to use the easy tear tape around the outside of the window. I cut out a stitched rectangle out of green cardstock and cut the grass die and I'm going to adhere it to the bottom of my window. I did the same thing with white cardstock and the cloud die, and I'm going to adhere that to the top of the window. Then I cut a white rectangle in the center of a scalloped rectangle die cut, and this creates a cute scallop border that you can adhere around the shadow box window. I used some tape runner to do that. I adhered another white scallop rectangle to the back panel, which is gonna be the inside of the card. This is why I like to fold the pieces a bit, even before I adhere them, so I know where everything's gonna go. For this card, I am using stamps from the Fluffy Puffy Unicorn stamp set. The matching dies are great to cut them all out. I found a cute sentiment from the stamp set and decided to place it on the clouds. It would have been a lot easier if I had planned ahead, as I do later in the video, but I placed the whole panel inside my mini Misty and placed the stamp where I want it and then stamp it with some Gina K Amalgam ink. I stamped the images with the same amalgam ink so that all of the black stamping will match and did some very basic Copic coloring on the unicorns and the clouds and the rainbow. I'm using some Gina K foam squares to pop up the images and I'm going to pop up one unicorn right on the front of the card. So it's great to have that little grassy hill right on the front of the window and then that scalloped border as well. I knew I wanted to have the second unicorn and the rainbow inside the shadow box, but I struggled with where to place them so that they would be seen. This, for me, was a real trial and error method. I have those low hanging clouds taking up a lot of space at the top, so everything needed to be below it in order to be seen. Once I had a better idea of where everything was going to go, I adhered two strips of tape to the flaps of the shadow box. For this, I adhered the tape to the back of the front flap and the front of the back flap. The front tabs of each hill gets pieces of tape as well. If the tape doesn't tear clean, just trim the edges with nonstick scissors. 
remove the protective strip of the left side of the hill and adhere it inside behind the window so that the tab faces down on that inside piece that I'm pointing to right there. So you want it further back than the fold of the window so that you're getting another layer of dimension and the height really depends on where you want the images to be within the window. Once you're really sure where you want your hill, press down on the adhesive or rub to make sure that it's secure. Do the same thing for the next layer. Again, making sure that this second hill is a bit higher than the last one, but not so high that it'll be hidden from the view outside the window by those clouds. Next, I peel off the protective layers on the tab on the front of the box and line it up with the rectangle from the panel in the back. So I'm going to place the panel on top so that the top and bottom line up. For this card, I had placed those adhesive strips on the inside of the tab of the front and that tab will be visible on the outside of the card. Later I'll share how I hid that tab inside the box from now on. Next remove the protective strips from the right hand tabs of your hills and close up the box being sure to make sure that those hills are straight. You want them straight across from left to right. Last thing to do is peel off the last protective strip there and then you're just going to close the box up and that completes the shadow box dimensional card. So for that first card, I just kind of went for it and didn't do a lot of planning. But these cards really are a lot easier if you pre-plan what colors you're going to use, what images you're going to use, where you're going to place your sentiment. So for the next two cards, I did a lot more planning. You'll see how much easier they are to assemble when you have everything planned out. For this card, I knew I wanted to create an ocean scene. So instead of using the top of the rectangle cut with the cloud die, I'm going to use the bottom of the rectangle with the cloud die flipped in order to create waves. This time I'm using the quarter inch Gina K Terrific Tape. So I cut two panels out of this blue cardstock, cut the window out of one, and I'm adhering the Terrific Tape around the window. I'm using the tape at the bottom and the sides to adhere the die cut waves and then I'm using the remainder of the tape to adhere a scalloped border around the window. I'm going to use some Thermweb Pixie Spray on the back of the Heffy Doodle Bubble Waves stencil to temporarily adhere it to both inside hill pieces on my Waffle Flower Water Media Mat. I'm using the Salty Ocean Distress Oxide Ink to ink blend on top of the stencils to create those wave panels. For this card, I'm using Heffy Doodle's Oceans of Love stamp set. I like the I really hope to see you soon sentiment, but it's a bit long for the space I have, so I'm gonna cut it in half. The words are very close together, so stretch them apart when you do this so you can make sure you don't cut through the letters. I placed the whole panel in my mini Misty, and I'm using chipped sapphire distress oxide ink to stamp the sentiment because even though I did a little planning, I didn't plan the whole way out. I'm going to use a couple of dots on my favorite liquid adhesive to adhere the small stamped images around the sentiment to fill in some of those white spaces around the words that I stamped. Next I'm going to fold back the tabs on the interior wave pieces with my bone folder and add tape on the front of those tabs. Then Fold and crease the main panels. Use the bone folder to really reinforce those score lines. I hold everything up together each time so that I can remind myself how it's all going to fit together in the end and to remind myself where to put the adhesive. It's pretty easy to see when you have the pieces in front of you where the adhesive needs to go. See how the front flap here has to be tucked in but the back flap can go outside the box 
or inside the box. It really depends on what you prefer. I decided to have the back flap tucked in, which means the adhesive needs to go on the outside or the front of both the panels. I think this is the easier way to think about it. So the quarter inch tape here is perfect because you only need one strip on these tabs and you're going to put your adhesive on the front of both of the tabs. So you see how it's on the front of the window, then I peel it off on that front piece and lay my rectangle down on top. That hides the flap on the inside and I'm gonna do the same exact thing for this other piece when we're done putting the waves inside there. Now it's time to figure out where to place all the little sea creatures and each of the waves. Even with my extra planning this time, I still find this part to be very much trial and error. I do move things around, jostle them up a little bit, push them down a little bit. This time was a bit easier because I knew I wanted the bottom of the first interior piece to line up with the bottom of the window. So I just needed to guess how far back I wanted it to go. Since I'm doing two pieces inside, a front and a back, I figured about a third of the way back was fine. Again, no need to measure, just eyeball it. The second wave is a little trickier because you want to be able to see the little faces of the sea creatures. Once that's settled, remove the top right hand side protective strips of the waves and fold up the back panel, making sure your waves are straight as you fold it together and adhere that right hand side. Then remove the last protective strip and close the window on top of it, making sure that the top and bottom are straight and that the edge of the window panel is straight to the fold of the flap. For this last shadow box card, I really tried to pre-plan everything. I have the box cut out of red cardstock, the window cut out of that, a scalloped border for the window, images from the Yappy Mail stamp set, colored and cut out, and I knew I wanted to have the sentiment on clouds. So I'm going to stamp the sending happy mail sentiment on a die cut rectangle with Gina K Amalgam ink. and. Then I'm going to cut it out with the cloud border. It's amazing what happens when you actually pre-plan something. So the way that border works is the edge of the die needs to be hanging off the side of the rectangle and that will cut it all out. Okay, so then I am going to adhere tape to all of my tabs and trim off any edges that are hanging. I'm adhering a blue scalloped rectangle to the inside of the back panel. This time I'm using a thin line of liquid glue at the top of the window so I can place my clouds at the very, very tippy top of that window. I'll use the same liquid glue to adhere the white scalloped border on top of that. Fold back the hill tabs and reinforce the fold with your bone folder. And then place tape strips on the outside or front of all your tabs. Check where your stamped images need to be in the window and then I'm popping up that mailbox on a foam square and popping up that little dog jumping up and then I'm going to adhere that little letter behind the dog so it looks like he's jumping up to mail the letter. I felt like those clouds were dangling a little bit and needed some reinforcement. So I cut a strip of red cardstock and added some tape runner behind it and then adhered it down half on the clouds and half on the top of the window just to make it a little more sturdy. I kind of jumped ahead here, got ahead of myself and started peeling off the left hand protective strip of the first hill. And then I remembered that I want to have half the box assembled. It just makes it easier to see where everything is going to go. So what you want to do is peel off the protective strip on the front window panel and then lay it down with the adhesive facing up and then lay the other panel down on top. See how everything lines up together there and that creates your box. So you can see on this card I have the back flap inside rather than outside the card. I should have adhered that blue scallop on top of the flap, but 
since this will be inside the card, you really can't see it. So I placed my second hill, checked its positioning by holding the box closed, and I decided I wanted a third hill, which I cut out of blue cardstock for sky. Remove all those protective strips of the hills and close the box, making sure you have all three pieces straight, which is a little tricky to do, but you can see there, just make sure that they're all straight across from left to right, and then close that back panel. Last, just peel off that last protective strip and close up the box, making sure that the tops and bottoms of both sides are all lined up and that the edge of the window is straight to the edge of the fold of the box. And that's it. The box is large enough that you can fit your hand in there to add additional images if you need to, like this heart that I decided to pop up on that last hill. Remember at the beginning of the video I said I would share at the end whether or not you can send these cards in the mail? Well, it's time. Let's take a look. Here are all three shadow box cards that I created, and yes, you can flatten them out by pressing down to one side or the other so that they lay flat, and then you can slide the card inside a standard A2 envelope. I think this is absolutely incredible. When your recipient receives the card in the mail, they can just slide the card out and return the box to its three-dimensional shape. I had so much fun creating those dimensional shadow box cards. If you love creating unique cards like that, let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in checking out the big shadow box die or other heavy doodle supplies, they will all be linked down in the YouTube description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell so you can be notified anytime my new videos are available. As always, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again again soon. Shadow box die. My support sm smart. <laughs> ah. mm.